go. So what if we could unleash the power completely of our W16 engine? What if we could reduce the weight to a minimum? And what would be the result in terms of weight to power ratio on one hand side, but at the end of the day, what could be the performance of the car? And exactly this was my briefing, what if? And the response of the team was incredible. A fantastic car, the Bugatti, Bolid. So ladies and gentlemen, now we want to show you the car, the Bugatti Bolid. And the, the man who is going to go on the discovery journey for us is Andy Wallace. Ciao Andy. Andy won once Le Mans and he was twice the fastest man on earth. So I want to send you on a journey and the audience should see with your eyes this fantastic car. And uh, you're going to meet our R&D boss, Stefan Elroth, and our chief designer, Achim Anscheid. And I'm curious about your feedback. So good luck and see you soon. Thank you. Wow, it looks absolutely stunning. What a car. We're always talking about form follows performance. And now I can see exactly what you mean. At least in the very beginning, it was only uh, form following performance. What really would happen if we strip a Bugatti Chiron of all its creature comfort and then position the driver quite a bit more extreme and lower in the car and then almost shrink wrap an exterior around the driver and the technical components and make it an ultra minimal and ultra performant concept. That became the project Bodied. And then when I look at the frontal area of the car, actually all I can see now is, is form following performance. For the first time, we're streaming the air through the internal part, meaning inside of the front wheels around the main monocoque. So you can see that performance and aerodynamic development dominates the frontal appearance of the car. And when we go around the side, that story actually continues. Raw air into the roof scoop hot air traveling along the cabin, fresh cool air traveling in this light blue channel towards the intercoolers, and then hot air coming from the water coolers through this enormous negative scoop behind the front wheel, and then cool air again traveling on the bottom into the oil coolers and exiting. So this goes to show how technology and aerodynamic handling really came first, and then we try to find a win-win how we position the cabin between the wheels, give the car quite a bit more stance, and also apply a bit of Bugatti identity with it, which I hope can be realized. It is unmistakably a Bugatti, and I can imagine that was not a work of the moment. Uh, took a moment, but then, you know, it's actually an evolution of the C line of the Chiron, and then compare that to the Bugatti line of the Devo, is quite a bit more sporty. And here you have the ultimate sportiness no? on the Bolide, where the Bugatti line becomes super fast and really nice and elongated in proportion. So what's happening at the rear? Come on, come on, I'll show you. So you see here that the exhaust was put right in the center of the rear end, therefore allowing the diffuser having maximum performance width. And at the same time, it creates an architecture where everything around the exhaust really is there for extracting hot air from the engine compartment. I noticed this X theme all over the car. So what's that all about? That has something to do with the experimental nature of the project. You remember the film, The Right Stuff, Chuck Yeager breaking the sound barrier. Absolutely. For the very first time. For us, this was a similar approach to this project. This experimental track focused car with the X graphics uh, all around. But I think the most prominent, you see that on the frontal area, now this remains probably my favorite view. You see the fuselage really arriving at the crash box 
and everything ends with the Bugatti horseshoe here in the front. And then left and right, you have this X graphic positioned all the way to the outside of the car, giving ultimate width expression into the exterior shape. And I like the reminiscence, you know, to the classic X graphic over the glass of vintage race cars, which you find repeated here on the frontal graphic, but it also builds a bridge to the glorious days of Bugatti GP racing, you know, in the 1920s and 1930s. This is Louis Giron with his Type 51 uh, winning in Monaco. And I think it's a wonderful analogy between the secret of success in those days, which was unmistakably the power to weight ratio, but it's a similar feeling and it creates a link that we like very much. Let's go and meet Stefan. He's gonna show us the underpinnings of the Belide. I wonder how far Bugatti will go this time. Further than we ever did before. Andy, a very warm welcome here at Bugatti Engineering. Thank you very much, great to see you. So what if, what if we take our W16 8 liter capacity engine and make a very radical concept out of that? The result is the Bugatti Bullet. And uh, we simulated a lot with that car and the results are breathtaking. Staggering. To achieve this, uh, you have to have a lot of innovations, material-wise, concept-wise, in the car. For example, this one. Auxiliary shaft we have here. Uh, the auxiliary shaft brings the power from the gearbox back to the rear axle. And um, it's a hybrid part made out of carbon fiber and uh, with titanium fittings. Half the weight, but twice as strong as the Dragon one. And to think it can take all that force. Yeah. And if we walk around, there's another part I have to show you. So this is the part of a front suspension, it's double wishbone uh, suspension, and this is the push rod. And uh, yeah, it's printed out of titanium. Incredible, because it weighs 100 gram. And the wall thickness varies between 0.5 and 1 millimeters. Uh, it has an inner structure, printed inner structure. And the braking force of that part is 3.7 tons. So two Chirons. Yes, basically, two Chirons. Honestly, it's ridiculous how light that is when you consider how strong it needs to be. It's beautifully made too. Would you miss this one? Yes, of course. Ah, okay. As you know, of course, um, to get the air through the car, around the car, uh, in the right way, it's very scientific to have the airflow there where you want to have the airflow. And uh, basically, the car has an adjustable front splitter, adjustable rear wing, a three-layer rear diffuser, and on the top we have air intake for the engine, and there we have inflatable bubbles uh, on that air intake. On higher speed, if you inflate those bubbles, the air stays on the car without any kind of turbulences, so the, that you get a better airflow on the rear wing, and on the same way you have more downforce. And uh, if we go on the side, uh, the car is according to a FIA free formula racing car rules. So the monocoque has an integrated rollover protection system. We have an integrated uh, side impact protection with a coolant going through that. And we have Michelin uh, slick tires and the width of the tire is 340 millimeters in the front and 400. It's a massive tire, 400 in the that back. Is. I think you have to have your own experience, Andy. Can, can I try it? Yes, jump in the car. Luckily, I brought my helmet with me. So now it's time to drive the Belide, finally. So we've seen the underpinnings of the car and some of the exotic lightweight materials that we used in the manufacture. And now we still don't get to see the car because it's covered in this rather colorful camouflage. And with all those things that Stefan was talking about, where they saved weight using amazingly light materials, the result is a car that weighs 1,240 kilograms. Incredibly light for a 16-cylinder two-seater car. And if we come to the back, the heart of the car, we see, of course, the W16 engine. Now, this engine produces 1,600 horsepower on regular 98-octane fuel, but using 110-octane race fuel, it can produce 1,850 horsepower. So coupled with that low weight, this gives us a weight to power ratio of 0.67 kilograms per horsepower, and importantly, a weight to torque number of 0.67 kilograms per newton meter. So what does this actually give us in terms of performance on track? 
Well, the Bugatti engineers have done some simulations, and incredibly, this car could lap the Nordschleife in 5 minutes and 23 seconds. But then, importantly perhaps for me, I can relate to this very well, a lap of the Le Mans circuit in 3 minutes and 7 seconds. That's 7 seconds faster than any LMP car has ever lapped Le Mans. So incredible performance, and I really can't wait to try the car. So let's go. Wow, what an experience. This car really does react like a proper race car. Amazing grip, high speed, low speed, the balance feels amazing, but there's one key difference. This car accelerates like nothing else I've ever experienced in my life, almost out of this world. Really an amazing car, and I'm so glad I got to drive it. Hi Andy and welcome back. So can you tell me a bit about your experience with the car? Well, this project is as close as you can get to a real race car. I thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity. It's a great project. Well done Bugatti. Thank you very much. We always value your feedback. This is very important to us. Ladies and gentlemen, in my eyes, Bugatti always was and still is striving for perfection. So at the end of the day, it comes down to the fact that we have to exceed the dream of our customers and our fans. The Bugatti Bolide is benchmarked for what is technologically possible today. And thanks to the dedication of the Bugatti team, this result could be achieved. And also the dedication to their jobs in general is enabling us so far to achieve another record year in the year 2020, and this despite COVID-19. And I have to say that this car is really a dream. The Bugatti Bolide. Vive la Mar.